Let's kick off this lesson by opening the image we had in the previous lesson, and that is 285 underscore 2945174.jpg. Locator number at photospin.com. Okay, there's our smiling guy. You know what I want? I want control of the sharpening on the smiling guy. And although we did have, in a sense, some control using those first three options that we did in the previous lesson, that's not the kind of control I want. Let's go up to the word filter on the pull down menu and start with convert for smart filters. Unless there's some overriding reason, you got to do this. Next, up to the word filter and down to sharpen, and this time, smart sharpen. And I'm going to bring that down in size some over here by clicking that little tiny button. Now, this guy over here, I want bigger. Usually I do that ahead of time, but, well, you know, I forgot. Do I have to get out of here and then change it there and then start all over? No. Use your shortcut keys, and that's the control key on Windows, the command key on a Mac, and the plus or minus keys. I use a smart trackpad, and I can actually move it just where I want it to be. I like that huge preview right here, and I don't turn the preview on. Now, this is just the way I work. That way, I have the original over here. I can see what's happening with the effect of the sharpening here and visually compare it to what's going on over here. You don't have to do that, but I just think that works pretty good. What do we got going? Well, we have up here a preset option. Now, this is the cool part where you get into the fact that every time you take a photograph with, say, your Nikon, and you got, a, I don't know, a 70 prime lens, there's that little bit of sharpening that you want to do to every image. You make your changes, you get it perfect, you save it as a preset. Let's not worry about that now. We've got two options, amount and radius. What do they do? Amount is how aggressive it goes after sharpening an area, and radius is basically how much on either side of the line it can use to drag in and make that area sharper. Everything else is done intelligently, if you will. This stuff down here we'll talk about in a second. Now, if I take both of these down to zero, just like that, obviously nothing's happening. You have to have some radius to make this work. That's what it uses to grab onto and make it sharp. If you're doing portraiture, something like this, my numbers and radius are going to be around a 1.2 to about a 2.5, somewhere in that general area. Small moves. I'm going to type it in over here. I'm going to do like about a 1.6. Don't forget, since we are using a smart filter layer, if we don't like it, we can change our mind. Now, the amount is then brought in, and we can come over here and start playing around. Now, if you look very carefully, the hairs, especially up here, are beginning to look a little bit sharper than they look over here. His beard is becoming more pronounced. What the computer is doing, it's looking for a shift in color or brightness, and the beard, since he has a dark beard, is shifting. His hair against his white skin is shifting, and the computer goes, that's an edge, I'm going to sharpen it. But then it looks here and says, nope, that's not an edge, I'm not sharpening that area. Smart sharpening. Now here's another trick I want you to remember. Small moves. If I like what I have here, and we are talking about small moves, you're not really going to aggressively sharpen anything and make it look good. These are just those little extra touches to make the image that much better. I would suggest that you cut these numbers in half. Actually less than half. It's not quite the same when you cut something in half here but I would then apply it two or three more times using the reduced numbers to get the same effect, and it will look better. Now, you also have this down here. We actually covered this in our chapter on reducing noise. The problem with sharpening an image, if sometimes it's got noise in it already, it can make the noise come back out again, kind of like his beard. And you can use reduced noise to pull the noise back down. You can remove Gaussian blur if there is any, lens blur, or a motion blur, if there's any of that. Down here, you've got shadows and you've got highlights. Notice when I do one. Doesn't really change anything, even though I slammed it all the way to the right. Shadow and highlights are used when you're working with images and you're really aggressively sharpening them, and it causes halo effects to appear around areas. These can help you get rid of them. But if you don't have any, which we don't, they're not really going to do much of anything. Now, we like what we have done. We'll leave these options alone. Click OK. Smart filter. I love that option. Here it is. Now, let's take this guy up to 100% by double-clicking on the zoom tool. 
that will give us a much better idea of what's going on. You always need to look at these things at 100%. If I turn it off now, see how subtle that is? But it does work. It does definitely work. Even clears his eyes up just a little bit. Now, if you want to try, you can come up to the word filter and select Smart Sharpen again. It will give you the option of changing it, but if you like it, you click through. Now we have two of them. Making small moves, don't try to do it all at once, produces images, I think. Give it just that extra sharpness, not going overboard to help the image be the best it can be.